This is it, you guys. I'm going over to the dark side. Those of you who know me know that I basically live on Photoshop. And if you don't know me, hi, I'm Swish and I basically live on Photoshop. I know the software, I know its capabilities, I know how far you can push it and I know its limitations. But recently on the Discord server, some of you guys kept bringing up Critter and it just got me thinking, Am I missing out on a gold mine? So many amazing artists use Critter, Sarah Teppers comes to mind, but it is such an underrated software compared to, say, Photoshop, which seems to be the industry standard. So today I'm gonna give Critter a good old fashioned college try. And because new experiences are scary, you guys have to go through it with me, okay? As always, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, then please remember to give it a big thumbs up so I know you'd like to see more experimental videos videos like this one, hit that subscribe button if you feel like you vibe with me and my content, and if you've used Critter, if you have been using Critter, or if you're planning to, um, let me know your experiences down in the comment section below because I'm very curious to see what you think of it. But now, let's take a deep breath and dive into a new experience. Okay, so full disclosure, I've skimmed through Critter before a few years ago and it was just so brand new that I didn't give it more than a few minutes before going running and crying back to Photoshop. So when I installed it this time, I had to go in and set it up from scratch. I started with one of the inbuilt workspaces called VFX Paint. It seemed to have all the windows that I would usually have open on Photoshop, but I moved a couple of things around just to get it how I personally prefer my workspace to be. I should also mention that my Photoshop workspace is similarly customized, like I specifically lay it out to be in a certain way, so that's not me saying that the default Critter workspaces are worse than the Photoshop ones at all. I am a creature of habit and this is the layout that I'm habituated to. <laughs> I also adjusted how much memory Critter could use and one tiny but important change that I had to make was that my tablet has hotkeys and the very bottom one is set to ALT which is the shortcut for the eyedropper tool on Photoshop. However, the Critter alternative to this is the control key so I had to create a profile on my tablet driver for Critter and change this one single hotkey to control. Everything else is the same, I did have to change some of the keyboard shortcuts on the software but nothing too crazy. Let's talk about what it's like to paint. So first of all, this is a huge drawback with Photoshop, is the fact that the software isn't really geared towards painting. Yes, you can paint in Photoshop and it works a treat, but the mechanics weren't built for painting. The software was coded for photo manipulation, hence the name Photoshop, and the fact that you can paint in it, let's face it, is a happy little accident. Critter, however, has specifically been built from the ground up to be a digital painting software. And so when I tell you the brush engine on this baby is powerful, whew, I am blown away. I genuinely love how the brushes respond to pressure and dynamics. It is simple, it is versatile, and most of all, it is powerful, especially compared to Photoshop. But like I said, Photoshop's brush engine wasn't specifically geared towards painting. So a better comparison would be something like Corel Painter. Ah, Corel Painter, the bane of my early digital art experience. No offense to Corel, but also full offense, but that software cannot handle a single pixel's worth of painting. I'm just saying, it is heavy and glitchy and it is so buggy. In other words, it is everything that Critter is not. One other thing that really surprised me about Critter is how it didn't cause my computer to just completely lose its mind. This is part of the reason I've stuck to Photoshop for so long, is that it is lighter on the GPU than most other digital art softwares. Like I can have Photoshop and Premiere Pro running at the same time and it wouldn't kill my computer. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised that Critter was able to handle complex functions with ease and my computer didn't burn with the heat of a thousand suns. Always a pleasant surprise when we can avoid that kind of thing. 
printer comes with a really solid set of inbuilt brush presets that mimic a whole bunch of traditional media. I even tried to make a custom stamp brush towards the end that would randomly stamp a starry alpha from a brush pack I often use on Photoshop. And surprisingly enough, this DIY brush took me less than half a minute to make and it works way better than it does on Photoshop. As far as brushes go though, I personally gear more towards dry media, so the charcoal, pencil and chalk brushes were really what drew me in most, but surprisingly enough when it came down to painting, I really enjoyed one of the oil paint brushes. What I really love is that some of the brushes have an inbuilt mixer function. So with this brush I use for the skin for instance, not only can it put colour down if you apply a lot of pressure, it can also mix colours around if you ease up on the pressure a little bit and continue painting. Again, Photoshop has this function as well, but that would technically be a mixer brush, which I found to be incredibly slow and glitchy. And I know for a fact that it's not bottlenecking due to my computer, because I've run 3D modelling software such as Blender and Maya on this computer with no issues whatsoever. So watching Critter take the mixing like a champ was definitely my favourite part of this process. It really goes a long way in bringing back that traditional feel to digital painting, which as I worked through this painting, I realised just how much I'd missed that. You see, for a few years now, I have been a painting machine. I've been putting down pixels and creating art almost mechanically ever since I got really comfortable with Photoshop. Hell, for the last year or so, I've been doing at least one painting every single week, sometimes even two or three. And while that is awesome and I am incredibly grateful to be able to do that, it is only now that I realised how much of the magic that I'd lost, the kind of magic that comes with pushing paint around, playing with organic paint textures and allowing the paint and canvas themselves to have an equal amount of input into the creative process. This is something I mentioned in this week's Patreon tutorial actually, but I personally believe that one of the most powerful functions of creativity is the possibility of complete chaos. But as humans, we aren't taught to produce chaos because chaos cannot be manufactured. And that is why digital art is so heavily preferred in the entertainment industry because you really get to control and structure every single aspect of it. However, as an artist, there invariably comes a point where that careful structure turns into a creative block. And as a type A who needs three days notice before any little event, I'm shocked to hear myself say this, but I actually miss the chaos. I miss letting the painting carve its own way into this world because while my technical skill might improve with every new digital painting, it can often come at the cost of creative flow. And so when I saw how beautifully Critter handles the smudging and blending and how powerfully it brings back in that chaotic element that you find in traditional art, I was honestly completely taken aback. Look, I know this is very philosophical and maybe I'm romanticizing a brush engine way too much, but if you've been painting digitally for a while, you'll know the struggle of having to carefully plan every single brush stroke and not being able to rely on the brush engine to function the way that a traditional medium would. So yes, maybe I am romanticizing a brush engine, but that's only because I am in love. But while I loved the overall experience of painting with Critter, there were three very specific issues that I had with the software that went beyond just being unfamiliar with it. So the first issue I had was with importing custom brushes. So when it comes to custom brushes, there are loads of packs online that you can download for free and they are usually excellent quality and work a treat. However, when it came to importing these brushes into Critter, I realised there are three different sets of imports that I needed to make because there are three different types of brush files. The first ones were brush bundles, which I believe contain both a brush head and a brush preset. I'm guessing those are better adapted to the newer updates to Critter, but then some brush packs I downloaded had brush heads as GBR files, and when I imported them into Critter, they just wouldn't show up in my brush presets. So I had to Google that real quick, and as it turned out, you also had to import a whole other set of preset files for these brushes, which have a KPP extension, and only then will the brush actually be functional. Is this common knowledge? Because I had no idea that you had to run two separate sets of imports for one brush pack. 
Then again, these could just be outdated brush kits that I downloaded, because when I imported the brush bundles, those seem to show up in the preset window just fine. Am I just being a silly goose about this? Please feel free to educate me in the comments below. Alright, problem number two I had with Critter was how unnecessarily complicated it was to work with layers. This is something Photoshop really nails, because in the layers panel on Photoshop, you have a button for a new layer, you have a button for a layer mask, you have extra buttons for special effects and other types of overlays, and if you want to clip a layer to the layer below it, you just alt click at the boundary between the two layers. Oh, but the layers panel in Critter is a convoluted maze. First of all, you have a singular button for a new layer and an arrow next to it that opens a whole menu. And then you have to sort through the menu to find what you're looking for. Listen, when I'm painting, I do not want to have to read scripture, okay? But <laughs> what I found the most infuriating was how many steps it takes to create a clipping mask. So first you have to select all of the layers that you want to clip as well as the base layer that you want to clip them to. Then you gotta right click on the selected layers, find the group submenu and click on quick clipping group. This submenu then creates a group with all your selected layers in it. Then you have to go through and lock the alpha on all of the layers that you want to clip, but leave the alpha on for the base layer that you want to clip to. And then you can start painting into the clipped layer. Again, by comparison, when it comes to Photoshop, all you do is alt click at the border between the layers. Having to do an entire set of choreography every time I want to clip a layer to the layer below it honestly feels like so much work. And I know what you're thinking, Swish, why don't you just use a shortcut for it? Let me tell you why. It's because I don't like having my keyboard out when I paint. This is why I use hotkeys on my tablet to avoid having to go back and use my keyboard and mouse because it all comes down to immersion. When I'm painting, I want to feel like I'm actually painting rather than having a machine interface in between me and the canvas. And while the brush engine is absolutely stunning and does wonders to help this process along, this constant having to read through drop-down menus and trying to find the alpha lock on each individual layer but making sure to keep it on for the base layer, it just takes me right out of flow and that is incredibly detrimental to my process personally. And the final issue I had was that it takes a while to save and also to render a transform. Now, I am fully aware that this could just be because I'm working on an 8K painting and that could be causing it to slow down. I often have this with Photoshop if there's too many layers or the RAM is overloaded. But with Photoshop, I know that it is because it's overloaded, and if it were a smaller file, there would be no lag. In other words, the lag is a one-off. With Critter, however, it did the lag thing every single time. So every time I hit save, not only did it take a while, I was also unable to do anything else on my PC. And every time I tried to resize something, or even just move a layer around, it would just show me a loading bar, and again, I couldn't do anything else on my PC while I waited. And yeah, I initially thought this was because it is a big painting and super high res, but I tried this with a way smaller canvas and just a single brush stroke. When I tried to transform it and then switch back to the brush tool, the layer would just disappear for a couple of seconds and would then render into the new orientation. I faced this exact issue towards the end as well when I was trying to create a dark vignette around the painting and had to blur a giant black border around the edges. It took ages for it to apply the blur and that was definitely a little annoying. Obviously this isn't a huge issue nor does it waste too much time but just like I was saying with the layers it takes away that immersion that can be so crucial when you're in a specific mental state. Look, maybe I'm being picky and maybe you other artists are way more patient and don't even see this as a legitimate concern. And I respect that, I really do. But personally, when I'm painting, it is very heavily based on intuition. And in order to allow for intuitive painting, I need to feel completely immersed into the process of painting and I need the tech to just completely disappear so there is nothing between me and the canvas. So when these annoying little things happen too frequently, it really takes a toll on my creative, intuitive process and just really messes with my head. That's pretty much all the issues I had with Critter though. Again, they're not huge issues and they might not even bother you guys, but this is just what I found bothers me. 
But to be honest with you, the brush engine's just so good that I'm just completely compelled to overlook these little glitches and become a critter groupie. So now, let's answer the biggest question of them all. Will Critter replace Photoshop in my workflow? At the moment, not completely. I will definitely continue to use Critter, especially when it comes to personal work that isn't time bound and doesn't have a very specific end goal. But when it comes to professional work, such as commissions or my Patreon tutorials, I think I'm gonna stick to Photoshop at least until I get super familiar with Critter's interface and functions. In fact, towards the very end of the process, I did pop this specific painting up into Photoshop and make some tiny final color adjustments on there purely because I just know what I'm looking for and where I can find it in Photoshop. Again, that is 100% due to familiarity and has nothing to do with the software. However, one thing I'm really happy about with Critter is that it lets you export your files as a PSD, which is Photoshop's project file extension, meaning it preserves your layers and everything losslessly. So if like me, you're brand new to the interface, this makes that transition period way easier because if you need a specific Photoshop function and can't find it on Critter, you just export it as a PSD and it's all sorted. Because as much as I genuinely enjoyed the software and painting with it, I just don't know it well enough to trust it when it comes to my time bound professional work. And obviously that is not Critter's fault, it is just me being too new at it. But given how much I enjoyed it, don't be surprised if, in future videos, you see me speed paint on Critter instead of Photoshop. All in all, I think even as a free software, Critter goes above and beyond what most paid digital painting softwares can do. And although the interface might take you a second to learn, those brushes, man, I am so, so in love. I just quickly want to say thank you so much to you guys on the Discord server for pushing me to try Critter again because I genuinely enjoyed the process and it brought back some of that magic that I didn't even know I was missing in my painting workflow. This has been a fun little exploration type of video and I hope you've enjoyed it and if you guys have liked it and want to see more of these in the future then let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. Maybe comment below if there are any software you want me to try in the future and I'll look them up. If you enjoy my content and would like to see more of it in the future then hit that subscribe button and notification bell down below so you don't miss a future upload on this channel and if you'd like even more in-depth art tutorials every single week come check out my patreon the link is in the video description as well as somewhere on the screen right now and with all of that said thank you so so much for hanging out with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have check out some more videos up here and i'll see you guys on the next one bye